All right, guys, going to be giving you that waiver wire week two top priority picks. And I'm going to tell you the top priority is not one of the players pictured in this picture above. But let's start out with the running backs here. Obviously, a running back like Austin Eckler, he had a good night. Um, he's going to be kind of just the same as Philip Lindsay. They both should be owned. They're both kind of scat backs if you're drafting someone like Deion Lewis or James White. These guys kind of fit that mold as well. But looking at the film here of Philip Lindsay, I was really impressed with him. Um, in this game, especially running inside the tackles, he displayed some good vision. He had some really good cutbacks. Um, you know, we touched on him in the preseason DFS a lot. We knew that he was going to have a role. Um, kind of thought it was just going to be more of a third down back role. Turns out he had the most touches on the team. Um, saw three less snaps than Royce Freeman. So this does look like it could be a running back by committee situation, which isn't too bad. Um, if you need a win right away, you know, you don't have that solid of a running back group. I could definitely see uh, using top priority on TJ Yeldon. I'm not going to go that route. I'm going to go with one of the receivers that we'll touch on in a second. But TJ Yeldon, he's a solid running back. I wouldn't spend too much fab on him because it looks like Fournette will be back, but you know Fournette. I was staying away from him because of his injury history. You know, he always seems to get injured, and if it's that same foot, uh, that's kind of worrisome for me. So, TJ Allen, not a bad option as well. Let's get into the receivers, though, here. I'm going to start out with Philip Dorsett. He just looks so good for the Patriots. He is their receiver number two. I mentioned that in my DFS video this week. Why not own the receiver number two for the New England Patriots? But I was really impressed with this film. I mean, look at his footwork on these routes. He's creating separation. He's just running great routes. He's cutting on a dime. I really like Philip Dorsett. He displays some really good film. Watch the last route in this video. It's spectacular. Uh, but the top waiver ad of the week is going to be Quincy and Nunwa. He saw 10 targets, had six receptions, 63 yards, and a touchdown. I've been praising Quincy for a while, so that's why I really like this pickup. Um, I own him in 90% of my leagues already. Um, I was kind of surprised that the receiver number one for the Jets wasn't rostered, and Robbie Anderson was. Another surprise for me, it was the separation between Keelan Cole and D.D. Westbrook. Keelan Cole is like 45% more owned than D.D. Westbrook. D.D. Westbrook is going to be the receiver that gets the most targets for the Jacksonville Jaguars. So that was just kind of a weird situation. You look, he saw six targets, had the most receptions. Um, had almost the most yards. Keelan Cole is a big receiver guy. D.D. Westbrook is a possession receiver guy. All right, getting into the receiver number three for the Packers, Geronimo Allison. He is just going to be a guy. He's going to be kind of sort of matchup dependent, but I don't mind him, especially if you're going against Aaron Rodgers. Not a bad waiver wire pickup to kind of cap the points that the other team can score. I also like Dante Pettis if uh, Goodwin's going to be out, and then I also do like uh, Cole Beasley. Saw a lot of targets. But let's go with the stream team. Ricky Seals-Jones, he actually dropped a low, poorly thrown ball in the touchdown by Sam Bradford. Don't mind him. New York Jets, they look really good on defense. They're going to be my stream team of the week. And then Nick Foles, he has a nice, easy matchup. He should be able to take advantage of it like Drew Bees did last week. Uh, but, yeah, that's all we got for you guys for this waiver Wire video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let's get that like and subscribe going. Appreciate it, guys. 